it's pizza. And it really is the perfect meal. When I was in college, I worked as a pizza delivery driver, and I would unironically say it was the perfect meal. I mean, it's got everything. You get a supreme pizza, you got your vegetables on there, you got your tomatoes. Tomatoes are fruit, right? You got your sugar in there because there's a lot of sugar in that tomato sauce. And you got your wheat. You got all of your food groups right there. Let's go on a mission and discuss the affordability of pizza. Can we beat Little Caesars? I mean, they're charging $7 for a cheese pizza nowadays. It's going to be tough to beat. Not even count the energy and time that you're putting into it. Tough to beat. But customizations, maybe that's where it's at. This isn't a bourgeois cooking channel here. I just want to know how much it costs me to make a pizza at home. Let's go get our equipment. This channel has become nothing more than an advertisement for large cast iron pans. I mean, normally these prices are impossible to beat. I don't think I have this one. I definitely have a smaller one, which goes right here. $15 for that guy? Unbelievable value. But even, even at 10 inches, which is many, it's not quite exponential as a logarithmic. The difference between the pizza that you get between a 10 inch and a 12 inch isn't just two inches of the pizza. There's a percentage here, some math, but even making a 10 inch pizza, how can we beat the big, the small pans were insufficient. We made pizzas. They were okay. We ate them, but there was a sale. The TJ Maxx delivers. I saved myself $10. No, it's getting hot in here. It's Lodge USA. And there's our burger pattern. We have her on the outside. I suppose that's close to the same size, or at least the second ring is. So third here. Of course, there's other limitations, like the size of the stove top. Let's see dispersion here. Put it right on here. How far out do we get? I don't always misuse kitchen implements. That's a lie. I typically do. But this works perfectly for this. I mean, it is kind of bowed out in the center. So if you're cooking something, it's going to drip off the edges. All right, let's see this temperature dip. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> There's a visual representation of that heat differential. <laughs> okay, used in this fashion might have been an error. It's not even fully down here. And you really shouldn't use these on a glass top, but meh. Project Farm had a video. If you haven't seen the Project Farm, absolutely go check him out. Unbiased, love everything he does. Never made a mistake. Everybody's Air Force dad. I don't know if he's Air Force, but it seems like he was. He compared the nonstick pans and he had a number of criteria, but he mentioned you get the temperature control. Obviously, I don't have much control here. Turned it down, waited a bit. We still have our video about pizza, obviously. Temperature control has been a challenge. It has on the plus side of it. Things are getting too hot. You get to cooking, you get a natural cadence of things. You put your pans on and you know approximately when they're hot. You don't need to time it because I've been terrible at it. I've been burning food, I've been undercooking other food. So it's a completely different. Cast iron experience is likely to be different on an old, a real poverty stove. This is just the one that came with the, the house. This is not necessarily something I would buy myself. I'm, if anything, hazardously cheap. So it's digital, but not as smart as you'd like to believe. Maybe these things have advanced in some time. This was put in the house, 95, so 30 years old, a 30 year old digital oven and stuff, and it still works. That's a feat all of itself. I mean, with how the reputation of modern appliances is, I would not expect that. Maybe it took them a while to figure out the planned obsolescence portion of it. I remember in my day, the fixtures came with the house and they, you likely sold them with the house as well. Not so much with this. They've made it into a consumable. Talk about planned obsolescence and stuff. Everyone thinks back to the 50s. Uh, you need to have matching, colorful appliances. They weren't these whites or beiges anymore. And it had to match. It had to match the cabinets and stuff. And same thing with automobiles. They made these beautiful fins. Great, great design. Beautiful. But the plan was to, one, make you buy it because it looks nice and is the current fad or trend or something. But also, you had to update every... As you service them more, but also, old miles aren't new miles. We don't make them like we used to, and for a reason. That's not what we mean by planned obsolescence. Because although this stove does not match, at some point they redid this to a lighter brown, so it doesn't quite match. I mean, maybe if it was like gray or silver back there. This was repainted as well. That's a nice primer. I need to redo that. There's, that's actually like a wallpaper under there that I painted over, but 
I don't care. I'm fine with it. It doesn't quite match. It doesn't match the hood. It doesn't match the walls or anything. It's because your stove is a different color of beige than the rest of the appliances, you don't have to update your entire kitchen. That's not what I mean by planned obsolescence. You can choose to if that's important to you, and more the power to you. But you're not updating because something died. That was a nice side trick I had there, but let's go get our ingredients for the pizza. We're actually going to get into the pizza. Our mozzarella, five ninety nine. Thirty two ounces. Oh, tomato sauce, three fifty nine. We'll have to do the math and the measurements on that. Assume it's possible to do this with your own tomatoes, but that is not simple. Then we got the yeast, which sixteen envelopes. Maybe that's what we should go by the envelope standard. If you get was this two pack, four pack? It'd be easier to do this math. A three pack of active dry yeast is. Two twenty-nine seventy-five cents a pack. Rough math. We'll do it officially here in a second. The sugar it uses so little sugar that we won't even account for it. There's also a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt to make a crust. This keeps on happening. We all must pay our dues. These are the great equalizers. That and gas stations. Because no matter how well off you are, well, it depends. If you get really well off, somebody else does your shopping for you. Flour. How much does flour cost nowadays? Whoa, 1079 for the bit. Have flour prices increased? All right, that's 599 for five pounds. So 569, so what's that, 515 a pound or so? Well, welcome back to the shindig and a well-organized one, in case you can't see. Now we have screwed around long enough. Let's get directly into our- Not my first rodeo, as you can see. These are leftovers, yes, that is pineapple on pizza. I've got one kid that prefers it, so I made this. And this is actually a stuffed crust. These are leftovers that the kids were eating today. Wasn't their favorite today, we'll get to that in a second. But the star of our show, the cast iron pan. I showed you in a previous clip, it is completely misusing this thing to use it for anything other <laughs> than pizza in the oven. It's a lodge. Look at those rings there. Does not mesh well with the glass top. Does, you can force it. You can force the square thing into the round peg or whatever, but not its intended purpose. And have we used it? Yes, we have. You can see some cutting lines. What are they doing? I haven't even started cooking anything yet. There's nothing for to use, but this is a cast iron thing. It's durable. It should last a lifetime, regardless of how you treat it. It has changed. I always remember cast iron being a hand-me-down thing, being an expensive thing that you could usually only get as a wedding gift or from your grandpa or something. Something to be coveted, something to be treated nice, but for the price of this, $30. Something like this, which by the way is destined for the dumpster. Look at that. I've got cast iron to replace it anyway now, but the cast iron has become the durable product. This $30, Let's compare apples to apples. Similar thing, I mean, higher sidewall, whatever. Can probably get that in a lodge or something. You call that a sa sauteing pan? I don't know the difference, but I know that I've used this for my searing. I've used it for about anything, but it's a Teflon coating, which you can see is pretty well worn down here. And it's also no longer nonstick as well, which is how you determine that you're poisoning yourself, which is what you're doing, because this stuff flakes by itself. I don't think there's much leaching, but once that coating starts to break off and you start eating it, Teflon is toxic and toxic to you. Cast iron, metal, 30 bucks or 25, whatever the price was on this, 20, 30. We're getting into the price of these nonstick pans. You want to get a fancy nonstick pan? 100, you could spend a lot of money on these. And they have a finite lifespan. This coating, no matter how well you treat it, is going to wear off. It's not a lifetime product. It's something you have to baby, take care of, no matter utensils, etc. This could care less. This is the frugal. This is the pot. That's how I remember it. These non-sticks, aluminum, co especially copper pans. Well, those are still a luxury. But these aluminum pan pans or galvanized steel, whatever they had, were always a luxury. We had old pans that were hand-me-down that were some even like hundreds of years old. We also cooked on a wood stove or coal stove. So it's the non-stick pans were a luxury and I think they remain that 
happened about 20 years ago where these things became a scarcity and something to be coveted. Maybe the vintage pans still are. I honestly don't think it makes a difference. Insert your opinion there. It just mean that I said we were going to get right to the point and right to the topic and then immediately went off topic. Welcome to the all-star pizza ingredient lineup. We've got a list here of items. Ooh, next to four-year-old drawings. Or she might have even been younger. I've had this book for a while. It is a fun joy in life that I let the kids go through my notebook whenever they want and draw whatever they want. I'm not sh Maybe I should go back and date these, but I do not. And I also, they usually pick random pages. They pick random pages to do their things. And so... I try not to peek forward, and when I get there, I see whatever was happening on that day. But back to our subject, we need two cups of flour. All-purpose flour right there. We need a yeast packet. We need some salt. We need olive oil. And a dash of sugar and water, whatever. Let's get into an effective mixing mode here. The flour calls for two cups of flour. We'll get the number here, two cups of flour. Now, the flour haul was, flour was $5.99, or $5.69 for five pounds of flour. So I got the 10 pound here, we have the 10 pound. We'll use those five pound measurements like we found at the store. 13.1 ounces of flour. Let's just round that up to a pound and I will show you why later. Two cups of flour. We need active dry yeast. Now, it's a whole packet of it or two and two and a half ounces. One yeast packet, which was two and a half ounces. Let's get those. You choose the red star. Why does this feel Chinese communist? Uh, I'm going to say two and a half teaspoons. I am just making that up. I don't know. Two and a half teaspoons. But we know it was 229 for a three pack. One and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar. What is that? A half ounce of sugar? I don't even know how you do the math on that. It would be so granular, it would be insignificant. We are not counting it. We need a teaspoon of salt. I'm choosing the garlic salt today. And this is another one of those ingredients that you're just gonna have in your house that you cannot assign a price to. I mean, this is garlic salt, the fancier of the salt. And you can see it was $3.99, and I've had this for many years. I don't know, 50 cents for the two of them? Then the olive oil. And there is a cost associated with that. 51 ounces here. Curse me, I did not get you the price on that. It is 10.46 for 51 ounces. And this calls for two tablespoons. Wait, how many tablespoons or teaspoons are in a tablespoon? I'm not sure. Three. Uh, let's just do six of these. And that is half an ounce. Let's just round it up to one ounce because we can. And then we need three quarters of a cup of water. Now let's get in here for some gratuitous mixing action. This is not the right tool for that. In fact, the right tool is either the proper bread hook, which I do not have, or you just get right into it. Now, inside's still sticky, so I'm pulling her apart. That's why you get the bread hook. Outside is flaky. You just need to mix it. Oh, and I can smell that garlic salt in there. So maybe my, this is something that I've done. N the various recipes I've got, by the way, I've got a complaint about recipe brokers online. Go look up a recipe for simple, simple pizza crust. You look up a recipe and what do you get? You get, you gotta go to the thing and it's a big pain. You gotta scroll down. There's a million advertisements, whatever. It's a big pain. I'm gonna add it. Just a wee bit of milk. That usually helps the stickiness, gets it feeling like it should. I have not yet tried actually just substituting milk for water. I think you, I don't know. Do any of my food scientists, whatever, dash of milk, know that if that's going to affect our yeast, that if you need the straight water for the yeast, or maybe I should do some sort of mixture. So we need a dough ball. This should go, we are a nice little ball. Cover and wait. While we're waiting, let's discuss sauce. 
I don't always do this sort of thing, but when I do, I choose the least flattering of angles. So our basic option, we've got the Hunt's tomato sauce here, which comes in at $2.99 for 28 ounces. And that is the cheap frugal option for a basic thing. However, I wanted to get a little bit more saucy and more adventurous, so I picked up this guy from the good food store. First mistake there, not frugal, not necessarily good. Delio Pommed, it. it's written in Italian, it doesn't come from Italy, I assume. Where does it come from? Should have a origin of label. Pennsylvania, that's a long way from Italy. I think it's closer to Italy. Or do you go the other way? I'm not sure. But... It was too complex. It does taste like marinara. It is a complex marinara, but I just don't think it is our goal. A convenient food that they can do themselves. I mean, I'm making it, and then we're going to refrigerate and or freeze it. That is the goal. And if they can microwave it themselves, they can make themselves an after-school snack without my intervention. Now, the cheese. We're using the wrong cheese for this because I'm out of the mozzarella cheese. But the mozzarella cheese is going to run you $3.48 for 16 ounces at the usual suspects. The great value suspects. This, of course, is the three cheese blend, the Fiesta blend. It's going to be just fine for us. Does it have mozzarella? It doesn't even have mozzarella in it. We over overestimated on the flour. The flour, for a reason. We need something that's called duster. Now, I haven't researched it to know if duster is different than flour. It feels just like flour, maybe a little bit more granular. But if that is what you're going to use to work out your pizza crust, which we're going to do here. And I think I mentioned previously that I worked pizza. I did my time at both a Papa John's and a Pizza Hut, which was, they were fine for the time. For a lack of duster, we're just going to use flour, and this is just going to be a waste product. Now, when you get to the big arrangements, yes, we're just throwing our flour right on the table. Now, if you are blessed with a large enough cutting table to do this on, obviously my cutting board is not long enough. Decent piece of wood, a good countertop. So long as it's clean, it doesn't matter. I did sanitize this before. Now we wait. How much longer? I don't got time for this. Come on. At the restaurant, we had a duster product. It was not quite flour. As Papa John's, you do your own crust at Pizza Hut at that time. I, I assume it's the same now. I don't know. Somebody can advise me on it. You had duster, you had your dough, you had to thaw your dough. The dough came frozen, you thawed it in the, the fridge and then you gotta work it into a pizza crust. So they are hand-making crust at Papa John's, not at Pizza Hut. Time has elapsed, and like magic, it looks exactly the same. Maybe we would have known this difference if I had a stop-action camera on her or something. I am not that fancy. You know, allegedly I do have that tech. Oh, well, let's work this thing. Working it and working it and working it right. Now, get her up in the flour. We do undo the sticky parts. I'm still a little extra. This is too much, too big of a, this is two pizzas. Tear off some, put it back. Now you can get the results you desire just with that rolling pin. There are some implements you should not cheap out on. Although I suppose a wooden rolling pin would be good. And a lifelong durable product. We go off the edges. Reminder, the goal is something like a circle. Flip, get some duster underneath there. This is a motion, and I... This is something I learned at Papa John's. Does it translate to the real pizza world? Oh, don't tell them they're not making real pizza. It's fast pizza. Better pizza, better ingredients. There is some truth to that. Everything is fresh. I mean, the pineapple comes from a can, but kind of a thick spot right there. And this is why your Papa John's pizzas always have a weird crust. And honestly, I like that. It's an individuality. Not everything needs to be cookie cutter. And we got about the right size. We could have gone even larger. Stuffed crust is possible. Yes, I can still smell that garlic in there. That's like a garlic cheesy bread. Get this on a pan. The table makes a difference. You need a finished table. This is a epoxy table. Now, you gotta poke holes in it. Normally you'd have a special ruler, but, ooh, a welding brush would be perfect for this. You go pop, 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 pop. We got a thicker side, we got a thinner side. She's not perfect. But that's fine. 
We're learning, we're experimenting, we're having fun. Clear it out, let's get on to our sauce. We're just gonna track it by the ounce. I'm gonna mix these. One, I do not wanna waste this stuff despite it not being that great. So we'll mix, we'll do half and half. Did I do something weird and buy whole tomatoes instead of tomato sauce? Yes, but I also have a blender. We'll not need that, just extract the sauce from that. Mix this around nicely. Let's improve this by giving it a little pinch of sugar. Might be a bit much. Now you can, to make the math easier, you can do this with just tomato sauce. We're not gonna get crazy here. That's actually pretty thin. And then we will spread. If I could, oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to review the footage. I should have zeroed out the scale. Whoops. But I will look at my, we'll check the tape, check the cameras. A little bit more in the center there. We might be getting overly sauced now. I will check the footage. Did the math, started at 15.3, ended at 8.1. So that's seven ounces of the sauce. The cheese, we've got two pounds of cheese here. Now this cheese is not the right cheese for this application. This is more of a taco cheese. That's fine, the kids will like it. May even like it more. Adds a little bit more color to the thing. Now I don't know what you're thinking, just a basic cheese pizza? Yes, just a basic cheese pizza. This is Poverty Kitchen after all, we are comparing. Now granted you get more value if you get a pepperoni pizza, I believe they're the same price. Maybe I should look this up. Seven bucks for a pizza at the Little Caesars. We compare apples to apples. So we started at two pounds. We are down to one pound, 10 ounces. So we have, what, eight ounces of cheese? Eight ounces of cheese, that's it? Now into the oven. The uh, downside, these things are heavy. It's actually kind of hard to do one-handed. And yes, the oven has not been cleaned since the last time you saw it in a video. I mean, how often do you clean your oven? When I was a kid, the oven was usually really on the brink of catching on fire every time you We did not use all of it. I mean, we could have or we could have thinned it out, but Crazy Bren? That's a subject for a different video. Crazy Bread, maybe we make it longer than 20 minutes. I don't know how long this is gonna be with editing, but of course we're gonna use a cast iron pan. This is the way. Ooh, nice blast of hot air. Look at that cheese already melting. I'll check on you guys. It actually wouldn't be too bad. I'm leaving that open because I'm gonna put the flour in there. I think it wouldn't be too bad to make like a garlic Parmesan stick. Or we could try to go all out and do the actual crazy bread. Pan Loco was This is absolutely amazing. Not the pizza itself. Best we can hope for is edible. We're getting there. But the math looking over here Looking over here Maybe this isn't the time to do this. Nope, definitely not the time Although I did get this nice thing right here to block off sound But I don't think it makes much difference. On another note, I don't know Seems to be a lot of soap in there for being in the last bit of the spin cycle. Yeah that's not good. Always something. Let us stay on topic here. So I did the math. We'll just abbreviate it for you. We had flour at 569 for five pounds. That's 80 ounces of flour. And so we end up with, do some basic math, 7.11 cents per ounce. Yeast, easy enough. We just did the math for one packet. That's the easy way to do it. So the yeast was, 229 for a three pack, so we are down to 76 cents. Sugar and salt, I just abbreviated. I put sugar and salt at 50 cents for the both of them. It was too small to measure. Now the olive oil, it comes to 21 cents per ounce because the oil was 1046 for 51 ounces. Easy enough, 1046 divided by 51, you end up with 21 cents per ounce. Water, we'll toss it in for free. The tomato sauce, that sauce was 219 for 28 ounces. So to buy 219 by 28, you get 7.8 cents per ounce. The cheese comes out to 22 cents per ounce. Yeah, you know, we did use a smaller package. We got a 
be a little bit of a handicap. So 16 ounces cost us 348. So 348 divided by 16, we get that 22 ounces. Looking here, we have 16 ounces of flour in the thing. 16 times 7, 11, whatever. You get $1.14. Just carry over the yeast for 76 cents. Carry over the 50 for the 50 cents we just tossed in for sugar and salt. Olive oil at 21 cents per ounce. One ounce, 21 cents. Easy enough. Free water. Water is free. Water should be free. Seven ounces of that tomato sauce that we put in. So 54 points, 55 cents. I put a decimal for a cent. Cheese, 22 cents per ounce. We used eight ounces of it. So we're 176. Add it all together. $4.92. Result is something like this. This is ready to pull out. Well, would you look at that? This is the way to cut. Well, I, suppose we could. I mean, you could have a dedicated pizza cutter here. Ooh, melted cheese. Look at that. <laughs> I'll eat that in a second. But I'm just excited at the cost. We saved two dollars here. And there could be more savings if you get a little bit more creative on your ingredients. For example, bigger quantities, whatever. So a five dollar pizza at home, you can still make a five dollar pizza. Tiny slice. Oh, this is so cheesy. Nice fats. Ooh, steamy. Still too hot. Uh, it's going to be a little doughy. I think I could have possibly had it in a little bit longer. I'm going to bed, though. Let's move this to the pan. Because I am lazy. I am going to have a slice of pizza tonight, though. So I'm going to toss it into this pan so I can put a convenient cover on it. Toss it right in the fridge, which you should not do. Because the fridge is there to cool food, or keep food cold, not to do the actual food cooling. But, uh, well, I'm awake for a few anyway. I'm gonna eat that right now. Yes, hold on, I need a YouTube thumbnail. Once again, I'll close my drawers. Something like... There. That's what you gotta do to get ahead in this industry, I guess. But, that value under five dollars for this and i actually like it although i should have done some more ingredients but we wanted to compare the best value in pizza to the cheapest pizza you can make at home eating cheaper and we're eating better oh i gotta show you this what is a breadstick and i think we can make a great garlic parmesan or even a crazy bread i'm to look into what the secret ingredients are but in the meantime i'm gonna have myself another slice of pizza let that chill for a bit i should put it on the back porch it's like 10 degrees outside. It's also 12.30 at night. But success! And these don't always turn out that way. End of the video, do you want me to beg you to do the things?